to, let's take a deep breath and discuss air. Now, when you get started working in paganism and you look at look up things, like if in someone's book of shadows or online or you know, on YouTube, it seems like everyone's got their opinion on what everything means. It's usually called correspondences. I never did well with those. It's one of the reasons that I'm eclectic, because it makes more sense for me to sit down and logic things out. So when I'm thinking about air, air at first I thought was going to be really tricky to define or start with, but when I started looking at it in a scientific kind of way, it helped. And then from it's kind of like what I've been talking about with logic and intuition and common sense. There, there's two ways that I've looked at air, and from there I've come up with what I believe. For To start with air, I started thinking about it scientifically. Air molecules. Air, it expands to, to f fill space. Um, and from there, common sense, so why not use air to take a spell that's meant to be far-reaching? Or, or a meditation that, that's meant to encompass kind of everything. Uh, the, the butterfly effect theory, where a butterfly um, flaps its wings and starts knocking molecules into each other until they beget a storm on the other side of the world. I could use air in a spell to make a small change in my life now, or a small wish in my life now, that I hope will domino and eventually create a large change in my life later or a better outcome and and you can also do that with like a cause that you you want to take up you know, a small change you make here with a little magical push behind it could lead towards um, something much bigger than what you originally started hopefully a good one and otherwise scientifically think of the atmosphere it, uh, it weighs it's something like 15 pounds per square inch at sea level and the reason that we never feel any of the weight of air is because it spreads so evenly over every inch of us that it, it balances out kind of like the bed of nails thing you know you, you would feel a nail probably you but if you make a bed of nails with them all evenly pointed you can lay down on it so imagine a burden especially a, a sudden one that is just dropped on your shoulders and it's weighing you down with air in mind, you could craft a spell asking for help to evenly distribute that weight or bring in someone else who can help you and help share the weight. Uh, cooling breeze is kind of like cooling tempers or desires. A strong wind can either impede progress or aid it, you know, talking about the wind at your back or going into the wind. Tornadoes, of course, can destroy, but inside the eye of a tornado is calm. So imagine a protective spell with those qualities. You on the inside, calm, and the tornado doing the damage uh, for you, protecting you. Now, getting in tune with an element goes towards the intuitive side of things. And literally, it's literally best to just be in contact with air. Congratulations, you're already there. And you can s literally just sit and feel wind shifts stand in front of your AC vent. However, of course, go outside. I know. Wait until you finish the video before you go outside, but afterwards, feel free to take a little jaunt. My particularly evocative moments where it really evokes air in my mind is going outside on a blustery day. We're talking the wind just wraps itself around your body and, and gusts and you can feel the power of it at times, the gentleness of it. My favorite days are the ones where you know it's a low pressure system and the sky looks like it's gonna fall open any moment and it's it's so powerful. You can feel the rain on the air, and you can maybe see a little lightning. Stormy days really just hit home to me, just how powerful the 
element of air and water together really can be. Water is my, my natural elements, and it's turned out that air is possibly my second. Other ways to to get in touch with it, you know, if you want to try and get a little help with that common sense, something like meditation. Breathing and meditation, uh, the, the old as the hills. Literally just something as simple as closing your eyes, relaxing, taking a few deep breaths, letting them out, practice your breathing, be very aware of your breathing, stuff like that. An actual meditation that involves visualization would be, um, one, one really popular one is you imagine yourself filled with uh, d darkness or smoke or something like that, that, vis that, that symbolizes your negative emotions. Anything that you're worried about or angry about or sad about, uh, just negativity in general, just, just filling you up. But what you're supposed to do is imagine the darkness on the inside, imagine the clean air outside as light. And you inhale the light, just, and you feel it being swept in, and you're full of air, and I've got to breathe. And then you exhale, and you try to exhale as much of that, that darkness out as possible. And it really, it's easier than it sounds, and l less silly than it sounds, because of the temperature change that happens when you breathe, you know. You can be in a 72 degree room, breathe in, hold it for a second, and when it breathes out, it's all like hot and nasty, you know, breath. Mm. Once you really get comfortable with air, take a little time to think about things like colors and scents. I say this because generally on an altar, you would have at least one candle for each element. I say usually because I actually have three for my fire candle and I'll explain that later. And having the right candle can be very important. I'm generally I'm generally kind of trapped by the fact that my budget is at the absolute minimum. But I chose this candle for my air candle for presents. I had very few choices, but this was the one that was the, mo was the best for me. You see, white is probably my top color for air because you can't buy clear candles. <laughs> Sorry. You, white, white is the closest to clear as I'm going to really get with candles. A second color that I might pick if I could not find a white candle would probably be light blue for the sky, you know, sky blue. Or gray. Gray would actually be a good color for that. Um, and I, oh, and I know some people choose yellow, light yellow, because of the the air candle traditionally being in the east and the sunrise thing. I don't really. And also, this is unscented. There's a lot of reasons for that. Mostly budgetary, but air as I'm currently living now in the city, doesn't really smell. And if it did, it would probably be pretty bad. <laughs> you know, smog and all that. When I think of scents on the breeze, I think of things like, like hanging laundry in a line. I don't know how many of you have done that, but when you take out like your sheets or something and you slap them over the line and hang them up and they come back and smack you in the face you know that that sense has always been pretty pretty nice for me so something like linen or cotton or something like that I did there, there were some linen scented candles at the time that I bought this one but it didn't smell right so they didn't they didn't quite get it this is not the jelly belly of candles and um, for some reason I don't know if maybe my mom overdosed me on vanilla candles when I was younger, but vanilla does not say to me air, and vanilla just does not appeal to me anymore. And I'd have to be careful with a sky blue candle because it would probably smell like berries or something like that, and that wouldn't be right either. So really, for me, 
picking out the right candle color with the right candle scent can be an exercise in frustration. I, I guess if you're one of those people that's been around magnolia trees, magnolia candles usually come in white, so that might actually be, be useful. But I've discovered, unfortunately, that white is, white is the best color for me. Maybe gray. I, I hadn't thought of gray before, but... And the off candles, like the off-white, the beige candles, those usually smell like things like cookies. And for me, that doesn't say air. That says cookies. Last thing I need to do while I'm in the middle of a spell is be hungry. Another thing that you should think about, and... It sounds odd that I'm giving this kind of advice after this whole thing that I just said about scents, but if you can get a candle unscented and it won't bother you, I would suggest doing it. And it's because, okay, this is one element. Generally on the altar you've got your other four, your other three elements on there. If you're like me, or if you, you've got a fifth element, I've got a forest candle, if you've got a spirit candle, and having them all lit at the same time for a spell can be a bit overwhelming if they're all strongly scented. Very overwhelming. Especially if you go further and you have candles in your spells. Tapers are usually pretty good about not being scented, or at least the ones that I've found are. But if you have votives involved, those little ones are, oh, and tea light candles. Those are pretty good about being unscented. But if you have a whole bunch of scented candles all going at once, the smell will kill you. Uh, and of course, incense, if you use incense, adding all that together it, like, is giving me a headache just thinking about it. So you might want to try to be judicious and if you can get away with not having a scent in, in a certain area, go for it. I have two of my altar candles are unscented. Unfortunately, they're on the same side, so I still get a little overload from this side. But, you know, one does what one can. Alright, I think that covers everything well enough. Next up is the southern element for me, fire. And I hope to see you there. Blessed be.